Okay, friends. We've been talking about the sexual reproduction in human. And we've seen the male reproductive system with spermatogenesis, female reproductive system with oogenesis. Now, in this video, we are going to see the third and most important event, you know, fertilization, for which we produce the male and female gametes. Because that's the overall idea about a sexual reproduction, that a male will produce a primary male cell, that is male gamete, which is haploid and a female will produce another female cell that is also haploid the egg and then this egg from female and sperm from male will fuse and actually it's wrong to say that both of them will fuse it's actually the sperm who donates its nucleus inside the egg the cytosol remains the cytosol of the egg sperm only donates the nucleus remember this idea and that completes the process of fertilization so for fertilization in human we know that a uh, female reproductive system inside the ovary they produce this ovum or egg now those egg cells start to start to move through the infundibulum then throughout this fallopian tube and we know the sperm needs to take entry inside this fallopian tube to fertilize the egg so what will happen at this point we have the egg with haploid nucleus and then we have this sperm with haploid nucleus and then what will happen both of this nucleus will fuse to form diploid nucleus or twin nucleus now once the sperm delivers the pronucleus inside the uh, the egg it produces 2n number of chromosome uh, diploid nucleus this large cell is known as zygote and that ends the process of fertilization but the question is what are unique features about human fertilization the fertilization process that is present in human is known as internal fertilization that means the event will be done inside our body itself in female body there are few organisms where the fertilization takes place outside the body known as external fertilizations okay but in this case it will be internal fertilization in fish it's external fertilization so now what will happen this egg or this ovum that is produced at the end the ovum it is matured and ruptured from graphene follicle and if you look at the structure of graphene follicle that there are multiple layers of tissue are present surrounding surrounding this this ovum so now what we can see the ovum also carry a membrane outside known as zona pellucida zona pellucida it's a layer surrounding the human egg actually it's a layer surrounding not only human but for all the other mammals if you look in all this case you'll find zona pellucida now this membrane zona pellucida is made with multiple there are also multiple types of proteins present in this membrane the proteins are known as z p proteins you know because zona starts with z pellucida with p so we call them z p proteins there are different z p proteins are there z p 1 2 3 all these proteins now they make this structure now sperm needs to first degrade this zona pellucida how exactly sperm do that if you look at the structure of a sperm we have a little extension at the start in the face of the sperm that extension that we can see is known as acrosome now this acrosome contains golgi apparatus a lot of vesicles and those vesicles are filled with different hydrolyzing enzymes hydrolyzing enzyme means proteolytic enzymes what does that mean those enzymes can destroy proteins they can destroy connective layers in the membrane so the proteins that are present zona pellucida proteins are destroyed by this proteolytic enzyme lysis means breakdown so proteolytic enzymes or proteolytic enzymes means the enzyme that can break a protein so they will destroy this protein layer and then slowly this head will be in contact with the egg so once let me draw it here so before that even let me draw how they are in contact they are in contact like that and for 
this process to continue the sperm need to migrate inside through the cervix inside the uterus and inside the fallopian tube that's why they need this flagella flagella will help the sperm to move now for the movement they need to rotate flagella and to rotate flagella they need energy from where they are getting the energy they are getting the energy because they have lots of mitochondria in this collar regions okay so they get the energy rotating the flagella and now they are fusing with the membrane of the egg so once they are fused then what will happen the cell membrane rearranges and the nucleus from the sperm is transferred inside the egg and once the transfer is done then what happens the outer layer the zona pellucida layer is shredded and there is a change in the structure outside and this outside layer becomes harder that's not only true for humans but that's also true for many other cases like <clears throat> the fertilization of any aqua or marine creatures like sea urchin all these things the outer layer needs a change after one sperm successfully donates its nucleus inside the egg because if the sperm successfully donates its nucleus in the egg that means it's a signal for the reproduction the fertilization to complete and in all these organisms one thing is common that they'll never allow more than one sperm to insert their nucleus inside the egg because they will only interact with one sperm because remember the idea the sperm will give n and the egg has its own n both the ends will become 2n so if more than one sperm enters its nucleus then what will happen then they will become more than 2n and that will be a really really big problem for the cell to live that's why they only take one particular nucleus from the sperm so once that is done it will undergo the membrane will undergo certain change especially some of this zp proteins are degraded so no further sperm can take entry inside and you know once the nucleus is inserted inside the cell inside the egg there is also chemical modification what kind of chemical modification let me tell you in a little bit although you don't need it in details but still <clears throat> after the delivery of the nucleus there are all these enzymes that will be removed acrosomal enzymes and that will cause you know slight change in the charge across the membrane because you know every cell membrane it has a specific charge uh, across it so if you put an electrode you'll find a specific current and charge flowing in that charge is normally minus 70 millivolt for any resting membrane we call it resting membrane potential so that value is also altered and also the delivery of nucleus it causes rapid increase in calcium ion concentration inside the egg as well that causes the alteration no further sperm can fuse no further sperm can bind now the remaining part of the bound sperm is also destroyed and degraded because they don't need this portion of the sperm anymore the nucleus is delivered the nucleus that is coming from the sperm and also the nucleus coming uh, that is present in the egg are known as pronucleus 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 sperm pronucleus and eggs pronucleus then both this pronucleus will fuse and it will produce 2n nucleus or diploid nucleus and that will complete the process of fertilization now remember one simple thing in humans we have this total 23 pairs of chromosome right so among them 22 pairs are autosomes that means all these pairs linked with uh, the genes that are present to make all our body uh, functions and other structures and one pair is there which is known as sex chromosome and that pair can be either xx or xy now this xx is present only in females and xy is present only in males so if a father is providing the sperm right so father can give either an x or an y to their children through the sperm so sperm can carry either x or y rest of the 22 chromosomes sperm will carry it's not a problem with that it will be same but this is known as sex chromosome the one pair but this is unique because this is variance now a male sperm can carry either x 
or a Y from the father to the children. But a female inside the egg can carry only X because you know it has two X so you can give either this X or that X but ultimately X is the same chromosome so they'll give only X. So in the egg nucleus we have 22 autosome and one X but in sperm we have 22 autosome or a X or Y. If the sperm because you know egg always give you X if the sperm gives X then that zygote is now having two X that means that zygote will produce a female child. Now if egg is always X is there if the if the sperm gives Y then what will happen? Egg has X sperm gives Y XY and that will give a male child. Okay that is the idea of how our sex is determined. It's very simple. It's known as an XY system of sex determination in human. Right? So a father has the two choice. A mother, although it has two X choice, but ultimately it's X. No more further change. Right? That's how uh, it's determined whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. Have you ever imagined many a times people ask you, like you look like your father, you look like your mother. You may ask yourself, for a girl, how can a, a girl look like a father? This is the reason. So if the father gives a X, mother also gives X. So XX, you're a daughter and you, you can look like your father because you get one X from your father. That's the reason. The same thing, a boy can look like its mother because mother will give one X and father gives the Y. So you'll get one X from the mother. That's why as a boy, you may look like your mother. That's the idea of how the overall, the very basic sex determination works in human. So this process is done in the fertilization event. So once this fertilization is over, now it's time for that zygote to be matured. Because you know the cell that we produce now is 2n number of chromosomes known as the diploid cell. Now this cell will now grow, they will get the nutrients, it will grow and divide and divide and then finally it will produce an adult organism. But how? Because this one particular cell will grow and produce a complete organism. It's a miracle, right? So what happens, you know, the fertilization, this process that we discussed here takes place in this fallopian tube. Once it's done in the fallopian tube, then this zygote will be transferred into the uterus. And in the uterus, in the last picture, I draw the implantation somewhere here. But actually, in reality, the implantation takes place in the uterine fundus because the uterine fundus makes a really thick bench and there where you'll start to implant this zygote so once it's implanted what happens the endometrium wall remember there are three separate uh, tissue layers endometrium is the innermost then uh, myometrium then perimetrium this endometrium the innermost wall start to incorporate and this wall start to arrange itself and start to grow and slowly cover up the rest of this zygote inside and this zygote after the fertilization we call it the developing embryo and this embryo will be covered by the layer that is produced from the endometrium so endometrium kind of uh, covers it and engulf it and what it forms is known as a uh, what womb you know what is womb so in turn uterus uh, in overall term is known as the womb so that's how it's implant it's known as the implantment of the developing embryo but you know this implantment works in a sequential way because the embryo is also growing the zygote is also growing and the implantation also going on simultaneously so the growth of zygote starts with 2n number of cells so let me tell you that 